Have you seen the grocery store robot in the Stop and Shop? Yes. Yeah, the Marty, it looks like a giant penis. It's like six feet tall. It roams the aisles. I will never see Marty the same way again. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but like, they, they, these poor people work so hard on getting a functional robot yeah. together. And then people hate Marty because they didn't at all consider how people would react to Marty in their space. Does everybody, I mean, you talk about this, do do people mostly hate Marty? Because I, I like I like Marty. I, <laughs> yeah, I but feel you like, like Flippy. Less... Yeah, I And do. actually, like... There's a, there's a parallel between the two? I believe there is. So we were actually going to do a study on this right before the pandemic hit, and then we canceled it because we didn't want to go to the grocery store, and neither did anyone else. Um, but... Our theory, so this was with a, a student at MIT, Daniela Di Paola. She noticed that everyone on Facebook in her circles was complaining about Marty. They're like, what is this creepy robot? It's watching me. It's always in the way. And she did this like quick and dirty sentiment analysis on Twitter where she was looking at positive and negative mentions of the robot. And she found that the biggest spike of negative mentions happened um, when Stop and Shop threw a birthday party for the Marty robots like with free cake and balloons, like who complains about free cake? Yeah. Well, people who hate Marty apparently. So, yeah. and so we were like, that's interesting. And then we did this like online poll, we used Mechanical Turk and we tried to get at what people don't like about Marty. And a lot of it wasn't, oh, Marty's taking jobs. It was Marty is the surveillance robot, which it's not, it looks for spills on the floor. It doesn't actually like look at any people um it's it's watching it's creepy it's getting in the way those were the things that people complained about and so our hypothesis became is marty a real life clippy because i know lex you love clippy but many people hated clippy well I, there's a complex thing there it could be like marriage a lot of people seem to want, like to complain about marriage but they secretly love it so it could be <laughs> The, the relationship you might have with uh, with Marty is like, oh, there he goes again, doing his stupid surveillance thing. But you grow to love the, um, I mean, bitching about the thing that kind of releases a kind of tension. And there's, I mean, s some people, a lot of people show love by sort of uh, busting each other's chops, you know, like making fun of each other. And then if I think I think people would really love it if Marty talked back, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like well, there's so many possible options for humor there. One, you can lean in, you can be like, "Yes, I'm an agent of the CIA, monitoring your every move," like mocking people that are concerned. You know, what I'm saying like, "Yes, I I'm watching you because you're so important with your shopping patterns. I'm collecting all this data." Um, or or just, you know, any kind of making fun of people. I don't know. But I think you hit on what exactly it is because when it comes to robots or artificial agents, I think people hate them more than they would some other machine or device or object. Um, and it might and it might be that thing, it might be combined with love or like whatever it is, it's a more extreme response because they view these things as social agents and not objects. And that was um, so Clifford Nass was a big human computer interaction person. And he, his theory about Clippy was that because people viewed Clippy as a social agent, when Clippy was annoying and would like bother them and interrupt them and like not remember what they told him, that's when people got upset because it wasn't fulfilling their social expectations. And so they complained about Clippy more than they would have if it had been a different, like not a, not a, you know, virtual character. So is complaining to you a sign that we're on the wrong path with a particular robot? Or is it possible, like, again, like marriage, like family, that there still is a path towards that direction where we can find deep, meaningful relationship? I think we absolutely can find deep, meaningful relationship with, Marty. with robots. And, well, maybe with Marty. I mean, I just would, I would have designed Marty a little differently. Like um, how? Isn't well, there a charm to the clumsiness, the slowness? Like there I, is if you're not just... trying to get through with a shopping cart and a screaming child. You know, there's, I think, I think you could make it charming. I think there are lots of design tricks that they could have used. 
And one of the things they did, I think, without thinking about it at all, is they slapped two big googly eyes on Marty. Oh, yeah. And I I wonder if that contributed maybe to people feeling watched um, because, <laughs> because it's looking at them. And <laughs> <laughs> so, like, is there a way to design the robot to do the function that it's doing in a way that doesn't, that people are actually attracted to rather than annoyed by? And there are many ways to do that, but companies aren't thinking about it. Now they're realizing that they should have thought about it. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to, if it would help to make Marty seem like an entity of its own versus uh, the arm of a large corporation. So there's some sense where this is just the camera that's monitoring people versus this is an entity that's a standalone entity. It has its own task and it has its own personality. Like the more personality you give it, the more it feels like it's not sharing data with anybody else. Like when we see other human beings, our basic assumption is whatever I say to this human being, it's not like being immediately sent to the CIA. Yeah, what I say to you, no one's going to hear that, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. (laughs) No, no, I'm kidding. Well, you forget it. I mean, you do forget it. I mean, I don't know if that, even with microphones here, you forget that that that's happening. But for some reason, I think probably with with Marty, um, I think when it's done really crudely and crappily, you start to realize, oh, this is like PR people trying to make a friendly version of a surveillance machine. 